Hi, friends. Welcome to Dutch the Podcast. My name is Mike. Right there is Tom Byfoot. He is the uh, publisher of Dutch the Magazine and, uh, of course, all things Mocum Publishing. Hi, Tom. Hi, Mike. How are you? Good, thank you. I'm uh, very excited about today's show. Uh, I've heard so many wonderful things about Pella, Iowa from you and from other people that uh, uh, taking a deeper dive on what exists there will be a very entertaining, uh, I'm sure. Uh, but before we get there, a couple of things. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. We would love if you did that. Uh, and also, uh, I'll recommend that you go check out DutchTheMedia.com, which, uh, Tom, I think you would even say that that's probably the best contact point for all things uh, Dutch in our world. Yeah, absolutely. I would even invite people who want to comment on the show or have got questions, uh, suggestions for topics uh, even. Go to DutchTheMedia.com and use the contact form to get in touch with us. Let's use that one central point to communicate with each other. Uh, and and uh, one other bit of business, uh, I'll recommend that uh, you check out Dutch the Magazine and uh, De Krant, uh regular publications brought to you by Mocum. Uh, and a lot of the stories that you'll find in the interviews and the people that we meet here on the show will come from those very publications. Uh, any comments on the most recent uh, Dutch the Magazine? Anything people should uh, note as a highlight, Tom? Yeah, um, Pella <laughs> is one of the most recent ones. Uh, we're talking about Pella today. Uh, a, lot, a lot more detail than we can get into in a, in a brief podcast, right? So now you, uh, if, if, you it, had, if it interests you. You had this Pella experience. Like you went to Pella and that's where the uh, story derives from. Uh, it seems to have made a heck of an impression on you. Well, you know what? You drive into town. Tell you something. Walmarts look the same everywhere, right? Oh, yeah. They're sort of gray buildings, blue facade. Not Impella. Impella, the Walmart, has a stepped gable, and it has window shutters, red and white Dutch window shutters, and it's even painted in Dutch green rather than in typical Walmart blue. So, and, 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 and this whole mall, all the Applebee's, the Taco Bell, they're all in wow. Dutch architecture stuff. Well, that's fantastic. I mean, uh, what's their slogan? Uh, America's Dutch treasure, I think. Yeah, America's Dutch treasure. Yeah, I call it the heart of Dutch America. And, I, you know, the thing is, they've been there for almost two centuries. So the culture isn't what I would call Dutch. The culture is Dutch American, which is a special culture. You find it there. You find it in Holland, Michigan. You find it in a few other places, Linden, a uh, small town in Washington, Fulton, a small town in Illinois. They, they, and, and they all know each other often because they go to the same schools. They've got the background in this Christian Reformed tradition. Um, so they go to Calvin College in Grand Rapids, Michigan, or they go to Central College in Pella, Iowa. Uh, and we've even got a, a school here in Canada, um, Redeemer College in, uh, in um, Ancaster. And then there's uh, the King's University in Edmonton. So, uh, and, and, and it's a close-knit community, but I call it Dutch American culture. It's very interesting because uh, I think that we're going to find out uh, as you speak to Ann Frost, by the way, from Pella, uh, an excellent representative, as uh, we'll come to know. Uh, but I think that that seems to be based in the Dutch immigration that then also took part in one of the most difficult eras in American history, and that was the frontier. And uh, yeah. so they have that in common with the early uh, settlers of, of America. Uh, I look forward to this interview. Uh, Tom, why don't you take us now? Uh, you had a chance to speak to Ann Frost a little bit earlier. Uh, let's listen in on that. Um, so um, in May of uh, last year, May of 2022, I visited Pella uh, just as tulip time was starting off. And, uh, you know, I, during my visit, I, I met up with, uh, with Ann Frost and yeah. uh, is online with us now to talk about all things Pella. So I'm really excited that, uh, that we've got you on the show, Anne. And, you know, one of the things I noticed as I drove into town, when you get to the um, city limits, uh, there's a little model windmill, there's a bed of tulips if you come in the right, uh, right time of year, as I did, and then there's a sign that says, uh, Welcome to Pella, a touch of Holland. So that's why you're a guest on Dutch the Podcast, I guess. So I'm going to open it up uh, immediately. You're the executive director of Visit Pella. So my first question really be, why, would, why should we visit Pella? Yeah, um, so thank you for having me on. Also, thank you for doing the articles in Dutch the Magazine. They've had some great um, 
response here in Pella. We just sent out our constant contact to all of our visitors who have signed up for that. And we put a link to your magazine in there. I we saw are that. excited. Thank you. Yeah, that we are highlighted. Um, and, so and maybe mention that, uh, I'll quickly mention that then, uh, that we did an article uh, on Pella, actually yeah. uh, two, and, and um, in the January, February issue of Dutch the Magazine, we did a big article on Pella, and then we'll have some Pella recipes in the March, April uh, magazine. Yeah, yeah. And thank you for letting us advertise in that magazine also. Um, we have received a couple requests to send visitor guides off to Canada. And oh, great. So a, a return on our investment already in the first, you know, week that it's been out. So that's wonderful. People, yeah, yeah. We were really happy about that. So people should visit Pella because we really are America's Dutch treasure. That's also a, a tagline of ours. When you come to Pella, a lot of people come because of tulip time. We plant over 300,000 tulips in our community. Um, but it's about the Dutch culture and the immersion that once you get here, you're able to see and feel and, and do. Yeah, I, I noticed that very much. And, um, you know, maybe it's worth uh, digging into the history of Pella a little bit. You know, Pella is right in the middle of the state of Iowa. Um, and, and I called it in my article, uh, the heart of Dutch America. And that's yeah. how it felt. Um, but why you're driving through the prairie, the open prairie, you suddenly you come upon this town where all the names and all the businesses sound Dutch, which you would recognize if you've got a Dutch background yourself. And there's Dutch facades in the buildings and there's windmills everywhere and tulips and wooden shoes. So uh, how, how did that come about? Um, so like the, the history of Pella or, yeah. um, so we had, um, some immigrants from Holland, from the Netherlands, they came over, they were persecuted for their religious beliefs. Um, some of the group actually went up to Holland, Michigan, and then some of them, you know, ended up coming to Iowa and they made this beautiful community. When they were coming across the prairie, they saw a, a stick in the ground with a shingle on it and the word Pella w was on this, this shingle. Um, and so... And, and there was nothing else, right? From what I understand, nothing. there was a few log cabins, but yes. 800 people came, but there was only 26 <laughs> cabins. So they yeah. dug holes in the side of the hills and, and they um, put, put straw roofs over those holes and, and that was called Straw Town. And, and that's yep. how they spent their first winter, right? Yep. And if you, if you come to visit Pella or when you come to visit Pella and you come to Pella Historical Museum, you can see a, a, a replication of that, that Straw Town house. Um, it's, it's within the museum and that's just really kind of neat to think somebody dug a hole in the side of the, the hill and lived in that for a whole winter along yeah. with their animals. To, and and let's know, face it, the winter in, in central Iowa is not, uh, it's not warm, let's put it that way. No, definitely not. Around Christmas time, you know, we had a bunch of snow and the week before it was a high of six degrees. So we can have some really bad weather. But th yeah. these immigrants, their leader, um, Henry Sculte, they, they came and um, they just decided they were going to make Pella the best place to be. And they were super successful. They were hard workers. They were dedicated. And since 1847, when they came, the, the community has just really embraced their, their Dutch heritage. They have never let that go. Yeah, and I noticed that when I was in town and um, just, just you know, a little bit more of the background. So from what I understood, the original uh, settlers came across on four ships, um, uh, sail ships at the time. Uh, one of them took 26 days to come from the Netherlands to, over to Baltimore is where they landed. Um, and uh, one of them actually took two months. Um, the... Um, the whole idea was to set up this community, and they traveled over land then from Baltimore uh, to Pella. And one of the, the anecdotes you hear, so this leader, uh, Hendrik uh, Schulte, um, he was the pastor. He was, he was a pastor in the uh, Christian uh, Reformed Church, um, or Reformed Church as it was known, at, was known at the time. And his wife traveled along with them. And the funny story I felt was um, when they arrived in Pella, um, his wife to him sa said to him, um, but Domini, that's the term we use for pastor, Domini, where's Pella? And she looked around and all she saw was prairie. And he said, well, you're in the center of it. So yeah. that indicates how, um, you know, how primitive it was when they first got there.
Yes, yeah. At one of the original cabins that if you come to Pella in the central square is the Tuttle Cabin. Um, they think it's one of the oldest cabins in Marion County. That is here in Pella. You can go and um, it's open during tulip time. You could see how people were living on the prairie uh, around this area. And that's just kind of all that was there. A few of these very crude cabins. Yeah, and, and, and then very quickly, within a, a few years, they built a town, really, with a grid yeah. laid out. And, and the grid you can still see when you come to Pella today. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, you mentioned uh, people are proud of their heritage. I noticed when I spoke to people, some of them would even say, oh, yeah, my answers were on the Nagasaki oh, yeah. or the... Or the um, uh, Flores Peter or whatever the name of the ship was. So, so it's really stuck. Why, why that pride? Can you, can you talk about that a little bit? I think, um, you know, it, it's kind of funny. We, we have quite a few people who are from the Netherlands living in the community. And um, it's just, they're just very proud of everything that um, they overcame when they, when they got to, to Pella. So they built literally a town out of nothing in just a few years. And they had great leadership. They had people who were invested. And um, it's just a, a point of pride for everybody here. Look what we made. Look what we can continue to do. And also, I think generationally, there are still a lot of grandparents and kids and then their grandkids. Um, people do move away, but a lot of, of the younger generation, they either stay because they just love the community so much, or they move away and they come back. And I think that helps with the pride and the generational, um, the continuation of being proud of the community. Like my great, great grandpa came over on the ship, or he was Sculpty's best friend, or, you know, whatever that story is going to be. Yeah, I noticed that you have a video on uh, on on YouTube uh, where you're interviewing. You are interviewing uh, one of the new board members of, oh, yeah. um, uh -huh. and and she had been away to um, Grand Rapids. Yep. Uh, probably to Calvin. I'm I'm not sure, yep, but probably to, right. Calvin. Yeah, she went to Calvin. And um, and she said, "I'm back to say to stay." Yes. And, yes. And that's uh, that that I found typical. I, I stayed in an Airbnb in uh, in Pella, and and the people uh, there were also very uh, very Dutch still, even after yeah. five or six generations in uh, yeah. in Pella. Um, now, how does Pella uh, celebrate its Dutch heritage? What what um, what specific uh, events are there? What do you see in the town? Um, you know, I've been there, but maybe for our listeners, um, can you delve into that a little bit? Yeah, so we definitely have tulip time, um, and that is coming up quickly. It is always the first Thursday, Friday, and Saturday of May. And um, so tulip time is just about ready to reach its 100th celebration. It was started in 1935. And, you know, there was some wooden tulips that they put up around the community and a little parade. And now it has its own steering committee and it is a force to be reckoned with when it comes to tulip time. Like people love it. They invest in it. They prepare for it the whole year. We have vendors and street food vendors and parades and we have the tulip queen and her court. And we have the town crier. And uh, like I had mentioned, we plant over 300,000 tulips uh, around the community. So it 300, is... 300,000. Yeah, I, I remember. Yeah. It, Bella is just one sea of color um, yeah. during tulip time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this year, we, we are kind of excited. So there's a, a new a tulip. It's called the, the Nightmare. And we import all of our tulips from the Netherlands. Um, and only 215 of these nightmare tulips are coming to America, and Pella has 100 of them. Oh, wow. Yeah, and so they're planted, they're planted in a secret location. Nobody knows yeah. where they're at yet, um, but it, this will be a, a big deal. Now, the other thing I noticed uh, is that people dress up in uh, period costume. I, I, I think you dressed up as well. I think I saw a photograph of you in yeah. traditional Dutch costume. Yeah. Um, and so is there street dancing or is there street scrubbing? 
all of the things, street dancing, dancing, uh, street scrubbing. There's the, the food carts. Um, like I said, the, the tulip queen in her court. Um, there's the town crier. It's just like you would uh, see. On, on the street scrubbing, the Dutch have this um, image of being really clean. And, and one of the things I read when I was uh, over in Pella was that uh, when they came on the boats, um, and they landed in Baltimore, they had cleaned the ships so thoroughly that they didn't have to go through health inspection that all the other immigrants had to. And uh, I even wrote down a quote from one of the captains on the, sh on, on the ships, and um, he had said he had never brought across the Atlantic more orderly or better behaved passengers than the people who were going to Pella. Uh, so, so that's a testament to... Um, to the people in Pella. Now, we're talking about tulip time. You mentioned um, 300,000 tulips, but you also get that in that order of number of visitors, right? Yeah, so it, it's kind of really hard to, to estimate how many visitors we're receiving. Um, I believe the, the executive director of Pella Historical, uh, Val Van um, Coten, she said that upwards of 200,000 people visited last year. Um, but it, it's really kind of hard to put a number on that. Well, you don't Throughout know, the, right? You don't know. Some, some people come on day trips. Some people stay overnight in the mine or somewhere else, right? So Correct, yes. And in 2022, we had such beautiful weather. Um, our office is right across the street from the Sculte Gardens and, and their home, the founder's home. We had people the week before tulip time, just hordes of people looking at the tulips because it was so gorgeous. And even the Wednesday after, until the Wednesday after tulip time last year, again, just a ton of people. I know um, Pella Historical just put out some statistics. And so in 2022, they had over 30,000 people visit the historical museum, not including tulip time. Oh, a that's lot. outside of tulip time. Wow. Yes. So, I mean, that, that's just a lot of people who come to the community. Now, one other thing that I noticed uh, when I was there is the dedication of the community to tulip time. Well, if you get 200,000 or whatever the number is, but a huge number of people visiting in a town of about 10,000, everyone's going to be all in, right? Yes. You, can, you yeah. can't do that without volunteers. Absolutely not. I mean, it's all the way down to the grade school level. Do we have those, you know, kids out there in, in costumes and, and they're participating and they're a part of the program too? Yeah, I know that that was uh, absolutely amazing. I, I took, I, I should mention this. I only want to mention this because I want to brag, but I took part in the uh, Klompen Classic 5K oh, yeah, yeah. run. Yeah. Uh, and and just, just the night before tulip time, um, there's a 5K run walk organized yeah. in Pella. It's been going on for many years, and uh, I, I decided to participate. And 1,500 people ran in a town of 10,000. No, no, more yeah. than 1,500, more than 2,000 ran, but 1,500 had listed Pella as their hometown. That's 15% yeah. of the population. I swear, I was running. The other, everyone else was lining the streets uh, to cheer yeah. on the runners. It yeah. was such a great atmosphere. Um, yeah. So we've talked about tulip time a little bit. We've talked about a uh, brief bit of history. Um, can we talk about the Dutch village for a little little bit, um, the historic uh, village? Yeah, yeah, I can. I, this is one of those areas where I'm probably not the most. Um, oh, you know everything. Yeah, I don't know if I know everything. <laughs> you've been, you've been but, there a while. Yeah. <laughs> well, let, let me first start by the impression I got. I, um, I saw the big towering windmill which has been there for just over 20 years, I think. Yes. A mm -hmm. huge windmill. Um, mm -hmm. Originally, uh, the top important from Holland. Uh, it towers over everything in Pella, and it yep. looks absolutely, you know, I grew up in Holland. It looks absolutely genuine. It is, well, it would do because it is genuine. Yeah, yeah. But it's, it's a corner of um, a historic village that was built with houses that date or, or, or look like they date back to the original settlement of uh, Pella. And it's, it's a, a museum, and it's well worth a visit. Um, yeah. There's, um, let me see, I wrote down somewhere um, what, uh, what you have there. Yeah, you have, um, oh, oh uh, Wyatt Earp. We'll, we'll talk about him in a little bit. Uh, yeah. You've got a grist mill, a general store, a log cabin, uh, a replica of Dominique Schulte's original church. Mm -hmm. um, 
But uh, Wyatt Earp, the famous uh, Western outlaw, uh, was yeah. also a resident of Pella, right? Yeah, he was. And, you know, for a long time, um, people did not want to embrace that Wyatt Earp lived here. You know, he's kind of like the bad guy of the West. Well, but with all these good, good, yeah, green, street-scrubbing Dutch this, people. Yeah, he had this kind of sketchy past and... and um, you know, it just was like, oh, why Earth lived here? Oh, yeah. I remember my son is, he'll be 24 here pretty soon. And we were talking about it. And I'm like, yeah, why Earth lived in Pella? And he goes, oh, no, he did not. And I'm like, yes, he did. Like, you know, this is kind of new information to some people. But, yeah, why Earth's um, dad moved him and his family here um, in the 1840s. And then they moved away again for a bit. I think they moved back to Illinois. And then they came back in 1859, and, and he spent some more time here before he, he moved out um, moved out west. But we have his childhood home. If, if my memory serves me correctly, I kind of have it pulled up over here. I believe the building that they lived in was kind of like tenements, you know, apartments, and then um, a store, too. So his family had a very small share of this very large building. But now it's a, a walkthrough experience. And you get to hear all about Wyatt Earp's life. Yeah, and, and, and I believe uh, that the uh, historic village was built around Wy Wyatt Earp uh, House was one of the first uh, buildings within that village. And then most of the others are focused more on the Dutch uh, heritage of, um, yeah. of Pella. Mm -hmm. um, now, um, one other thing I'd like to mention is uh, that I ate some fantastic Dutch food in Pella. Uh, yeah. I went to one of the bakeries, the several bakeries, and I got the best tulip uh, the best almond cookie that i've eaten since i left the netherlands freshly okay. baked shaped like a tulip it was yeah. it was absolutely delicious what other things uh, in pella point to dutch heritage what what other things can you can you sort of do yeah so of course we have the bakeries we have meat markets um so we have two meat markets and they're um you know they produce the dutch spiced beef we have um, a cheese um, producer right outside of town, but he is in a little community called Leighton, but his family is Dutch Heritage, um, and it's Frisian Farms, and they make the, the uh, I'm, I'm not saying Gouda correctly, but Gouda, right? Is that how you <laughs> no, say Most people say Close. Gouda. <laughs> yeah. It's easier. Um, so he produces some uh, Dutch cheese. We have... Um, uh, a restaurant downtown, Dutch Fix, and they kind of focus on Dutch. Street. I went there. They have the the old the the good traditional Dutch deep fried um, croquettes and bit yes. of balls and fries and everything. I, old they, bullet yeah, and all of those. Absolutely, good yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we have, um, you know, just different um, bakeries, meat markets. Of course, we have um, the Pella Storkel has a lot of. Dutch souvenirs that you can purchase. A lot of the stores around town are really good also about um, having some inventory or some different products that, that focus on Dutch um, culture. So whether it's that shirts that, that talk about that or um, they have certain items on their, their menu at restaurants and um, they just try to make the whole atmosphere while you're here Dutch. Yeah, and I, I, I even went into a kind of a thrift store and I saw, I saw some interesting old uh, Delft Blue and Dutch oh, uh, yeah. related uh, items. Um, yeah. I actually picked up a little plate there uh, that I thought was uh, was uh, very neat uh, from, from another Dutch settlement in uh, Montana that had somehow made its way to, uh, to Pella. Oh, anyway, be, before we, uh, we let you go, um, I'd, I'd like to uh, briefly mention, I went to Pella during tulip time and you heard 200,000 people come to town and it's, the atmosphere is great. You know, you've got the street vendors, you've got the parades. I walked through the streets where the parades floats were set up and, you know, the floats were all themed Dutch. There was one called the Frisian Farmer's Dream and there was one about the 12 provinces. But it's not, there are other times that you can visit Pella. Is it a year-round destination? It is most certainly a year-round destination. So Pella is really nicely located in the state of Iowa. We also have, um, we're just a few miles away from Iowa's largest lake, Lake Red Rock. 
And so there is boating and camping and hiking trails and biking trails, and they're all connected. So you can get on the bike trail in Pella, and you can ride it all the way out to Lake Red Rock. Red Rock. And it's just great to do on a nice spring, summer, fall day. Um, we have things throughout the whole year. Um, so within the magazine, the ad that we placed with you, again, thank you for letting us do that. We have Wyatt Earp Days. Um, we, we've tried to have King's Day the last couple years, but oh. it's been rained out. But oh, Pella Historical, it, yeah, we were just really disappointed that But that that's just before happen. tulip time anyway, right? It's April it 27th. Is. It's in April, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, um, you know, we hope that this year we have King's Day, if not next year. Um, White Earth Days, we just started um, a Christmas market, and 2022 was our second year, so we have Care Smart, a Dutch Christmas market. It's along the Molengrat, and we... Well, the Molengrat, uh, we haven't even mentioned that yet, either. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah, so all these things, um, we have Sinterklaas, he comes to town, Um so, so tell me, because I'd, I'd be interested to see that. What, what happens at Santa Claus? Yeah, so he arrives on a ship. We have a small parade. Um, he comes. He walks around the community. He um, ends up at Sculpty Church, and he meets with kids and families. And then we are lucky enough that he comes down to the, the Care Smart, and he mingles with people down there, too. Oh, that's great. Yeah, just for our yeah. listeners who are not, not aware, but Santa Claus is the Dutch Santa who comes on December 5th. Now, do you also stick to that date of December 5th for, uh, for Santa Claus? Uh, no, he makes a, a sometimes early or late arrival. <laughs> He's always the, the first Saturday of December. So oh, the first Saturday on, of December. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. but that's the way we do it in Holland as well. I mean, yeah. if, if Santa Claus on a weekday and a uh, business day, then uh, we usually do it the weekend before uh, or after. So that makes sense. Um, yeah, Molengroff, you just briefly mentioned it. Um, that was a new development, and I also thought that was very interesting to see. You've got a drawbridge, typically Dutch drawbridge. It's almost like it recreated a Dutch canal zone in, in a Dutch city. Um, yeah. and, and it's a business district, right? There's offices, there's a theater, there's um, a hotel. Yeah, um, the Amsterdam is on one end of the Molengroff. So it's a nice place to walk, perfect place to take pictures. Um, I think the goal in the future for that space is to have some outside um, seating. We encourage people to, to walk around and grab a coffee or something to eat and, and go along the Mullingrot and hang out. Um, it does have a working drawbridge. Um, at, during CareSmart, that is where we set up our booths for our Christmas market, where we have vendors come and, and sell different items handcrafted. They all have to be something that's made by themselves, not mass produced. And then we have some Dutch food also during the Christmas market. So we have the Ole Bolin and the hot chocolate and the mulled wine and all of those good things. Wonderful. Yeah, it sounds like I should come Christmas time as well. Yes, you should. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'd love great. to come back. I said that in the article as well. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to um, let you go, uh, Anne, because I'm sure you're very busy uh, getting the run-up to, uh, to tulip time. Um, is there anything I missed? And then also, can you give us some pointers to where can we find out more about Pella? Um, uh, how do we get there? Um, and, and, and uh, you know, some practical information. Yeah, so um, our website is visitpella.com, and our social media is also Visit Pella. Um, we have Instagram and Facebook, and we have a really good social media presence. Our 2023 visitor guides were just printed along with maps of the community and the surrounding area. If you reach out to us um, via the website or Instagram or Facebook, send us a message. We are more than happy to mail those hard copies to you. Um, or you can give us a call at Visit Pella at 641-204-0885. That is great. Well, thank you yeah. so much for taking the time to talk to us. And, yeah. um, you know, all I can say it's, it's, it's a lovely, it's, it's the heart of Dutch America. And, and yeah. what's your tagline again? Yeah, America's Dutch treasure. Yeah. America's Dutch treasure. We'll leave it at yeah. that. Thank you so much, Anne Frost, yeah. Executive Director at uh, Visit Pella. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Bye. Well, Tom, you did it again. Another great guest, and uh, what a fascinating story. I really want to go to Pella, Iowa so badly now.
it's just well, about... uh, maybe we should. Maybe we should go there and record a live show there during Tulip time. Great idea. That's uh, it's just it's amazing to me. So let's see if I got this right. Three hundred thousand tulips, ten thousand people, but three hundred thousand tulips. Uh, a very close knit community, very tied to Dutch tradition, and uh, it sounds like tulip time is an incredible festival. It's it's a great festival, great uh, Dutch food, great Dutch tradition. Uh, while I'm talking about it, when I was there, I met this really nice couple, uh, and they run a store called Pella Books. Okay. Um, and I want to give a shout out to Debbie and DJ at Pella Books, uh, oh. partially because they sell my book, which I hadn't mentioned yet, but I brought out a book um, with uh, 43 articles, uh, 43 essays about the Dutch in uh, North America, in both Canada and the USA. So if you're interested, it's called Hiding in Plain Sight, uh, Reflections on the Dutch Presence in North America. Uh, you can find it on Amazon, but you can, of course, also find it on our own website, DutchTheMedia.com. And you can find it at Pella Books, right downtown Pella, Pella uh, in one of the oldest buildings in town. Uh, one of the original settlers' churches has been turned into a bookshop, and that's where you find wow. Pella Books. Oh, very nice. Well, if, if in Pella, uh, you now have a recommend for a good bookstore and, and a great book. Uh, Tom, thanks so much uh, for this show again today. Don't forget to subscribe, DutchTheMedia.com for all things Dutch and uh, for Tom's book as well. Uh, thank you for joining us. Tom, we'll see you next time. See you next time. <laughs>